In the first of its kind House hearing on identif- unidentified anomalous phenomena, whistleblower David Grush blew open a discussion about interdimensional beings, touching on holographic theory. Let's listen. In terms of uh, multidimensionality, that kind of thing, the, the framework uh, that I'm familiar with, for example, is something called the holographic principle. Uh, both, uh, it's, it derives itself from general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics, and that is, if you want to imagine a uh, 3D object such as yourself casting a shadow onto a 2D surface, uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific trope that you can actually cross, literally, as far as I understand, but there's probably guys of PhDs that we could probably but, argue about that. But you have yeah. not seen any documentation that that's what's occurring. Uh, only a theoretical framework discussion. Yes. If any of that went over your head, professor of science at Harvard and author of Extraterrestrial, The First Sign of Intelligent Life Beyond Earth, Dr. Avi Loeb, is joining us to break this down. Welcome, Dr. Loeb. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about what he's explaining there, the holographic theory, and how that might help us understand the technology that UAPs or UFOs are using? I don't think that's very relevant. The, the holographic principle uh, is a concept that considered in the context of string theory in a way of unifying quantum mechanics and gravity in the context of extra dimensions, meaning we know of three dimensions of space and of time, And string theory argues that in order to unify quantum mechanics and gravity, the two pillars of modern physics, they need to consider additional spatial dimensions. And then they have proven mathematically some equivalence between quantum field theory and gravity within those extra dimensions. That's, uh, first of all, not known to be a description of reality. String theory is a purely mathematical concept at the moment. We don't know whether there are extra dimensions. Uh, Theoretical physicists talk about it for decades, but we have no clue whatsoever that there is any extra dimension beyond the three spatial dimensions we have. So mentioning that in the context of technology is completely inappropriate because we don't know whether uh, even there are extra dimensions and whether it applies to the reality that we all share. It's just a mathematical concept at this point within string theory, which is not proven by any means to be correct. There was no experimental evidence for string theory, and we don't see any prospect for getting experimental evidence in the coming decades. So the way I would think of it is just as a mathematical concept that has no relevance to technology, no relevance to the real world, and I'm just surprised that he even mentioned that. Yeah, and he did say that it was just a theoretical concept, but I also was kind of confused as to why it was brought up. I mean, based on your research, what is the best explanation of where these UAPs are coming from exactly, if not a different realm or different period of time? Well, we can, first of all, they're not moving at speeds that uh, cannot be explained by conventional physics. I mean, Uh, they might be moving at the speeds and accelerations that exceed those attainable by our technology, but, you know, they don't move faster than light. They don't move uh, at an acceleration that cannot be explained. And so uh, if there are functional devices near Earth that were constructed by some alien technological manufacturer, you know, they might have propulsion systems that are different than the ones we use. And... uh, You know, I wouldn't call for new physics in this context. The people that are talking about new physics often are not very familiar with old physics, the physics we know. So for them, talking about new physics is an easy thing. But if you look at modern physics, you know, over the past few decades, it was really difficult to find new principles, new laws of physics, new phenomena. Every time a nuance is found on what we already know, uh, it, it gets the Nobel Prize. And so uh, and, and actually the recent Nobel Prizes were awarded for things that were known for decades. So it's just uh, non-professional for someone that doesn't know the physics we actually already know to talk about new physics. And moreover, you know, if we don't have good data we, in, in these cases of the Nimitz incident, and of what, uh, uh, you know, the pilots are talking about, uh, Ryan Graves was talking about, you know, we don't have the data. We don't have any physical evidence measurements that can allow us to assess 
uh, what they are actually what they were reporting about. So talking about new physics is irresponsible under these circumstances. In order to consider new physics, we need exquisite data that we cannot explain with conventional physics. And non-professionals just talk about it in a cavalier way. Just, you know, well, maybe it's new physics, but that's not the way science is done. We need exquisite data from instruments, not from eyewitnesses. And we don't have that for these reports. So, Dr. Loeb, with the existing physics that we have and have proven with many years of science, it seems to me that people are just inventing new physics to try and explain something other than perhaps aliens exist. What do you make of what's coming out in the hearing? Uh, do you find that there's merit in Grush's claims about UFOs and UAPs that have been obtained by the U.S. government, military and intelligence community, and that there are biologics, as Grush said? Yeah, so just think of yourself as a juror listening to witnesses in the courtroom. And the question is, would you believe him? Would you believe them? Now, they talk about experiences, the, you know, the pilots. We haven't had access to the actual data, so we cannot assess whether what they're talking about is just their personal impressions and how reliable these are, how unusual the phenomena that they saw were. And with respect to Grash, I would like to see someone who had firsthand experience of the evidence, like saw the materials, saw the, the actual uh, um, you know, spacecraft that he's talking about and talks about it. He is talking about what other people told him, 40 witnesses. I don't care about how many people talked with him. The issue is I want to hear someone who actually saw the materials or I want to see some footage or I want to get some information, evidence that as a scientist I can analyze. Without that, it's just hearsay. Now, of course, the important uh, development from this hearing is that he was willing to provide contacts, uh, information to representatives such that they would contact people with first-hand experience. And uh, presumably that could lead to the release of information. But until that information is released, until we see footage, until we actually see a spacecraft or materials that came from there, uh, we cannot assess whether it's real. It could be all fabricated. Right. And I understand at some point during the hearing, uh, some lawmakers went into a skiff with David Grush to apparently review some video evidence or get the names of these individuals that they could reach out to. Aside from whether or not Grush's claims are believable or or need more evidence attached to them, do you think it's a good sign in general that this hearing was had at all? And does this suggest that these lawmakers are taking the issue of UAP seriously? Definitely. I think the real meat is in the classified information. OK, so we are not exposed to that. And perhaps some people who saw it initiated this process. And for us, it doesn't look as convincing as of now, but it would lead to some release of evidence and data. And, you know, as an astronomer, uh, uh, you know, it's, it looks completely reasonable to expect uh, the U.S. government to be the first to notice something unusual because they monitor the sky during their day job um, for national security purposes. And they would be the first to notice something unusual in our sky, something crashing. Astronomers focus their telescopes on very distant sources of light. They ignore anything cl very close to Earth. And so, you know, it's quite possible the US government has possession or information about the alien technologies. Uh, as a scientist, you know, the sky is not classified. The oceans are not classified. So I'm seeking personally uh, evidence for what lies in interstellar space. We just came back a month ago uh, from an expedition to the Pacific Ocean to retrieve uh, materials from the first recognized interstellar meteor. That's an object bigger than half a meter that collided with Earth, uh, had an unusual material strength, and was moving faster than 95% of the stars in the vicinity of the sun. And we want to check whether it's uh, uh, technological in origin. We are currently analyzing the materials at Harvard University and trying to figure it out. Thank you, Dr. Avi Loeb, for breaking this down with us. I think this is on a lot of people's minds right now, given the congressional hearing. Looking forward to follow up. Thank you.